So I'm looking at experiment 45 on Useful Chem Wiki, and it involves a Yugi reaction uh, between an aldehyde, an amine, an acid, and an isonitrile. We're going to be focused right now on the imine formation between veritraldehyde and 5 methyl furfurylamine. What we're going to do is to scroll down to the results section at the very end of the results sections. There's a lot of NMRs there in JCAM format, but we want to go to the spectral overlay section. So if you take a look at the first overlay, it will superimpose veritraldehyde, 5 methyl furfurylamine that are starting materials, and the, the reaction after 24 hours, where we estimate that we have about 88% conversion to the imine. I'm going to click on the overlay one link, and that opens up the JSPEC view applet. The first thing we want to do is to reverse the plot and toggle the grid so that we can see the spectrum in a more familiar way. The next thing we want to do is to expand the area near zero to make sure that all the spectra are zeroed properly. So to expand a section in uh, JSPEC view, we left click on the left part of the area that we want to expand, drag across, and then let go of the left button. And I can keep doing that until I get the magnification that I desire. First thing to notice is that not all of these peaks are singlet as we will expect for the TMS peak. Uh, the green one is, but the blue and the red have actually two peaks, and these are actually uh, side peaks that originate from some problem that we've been having with our Varian 300 instrument lately, and hopefully we will resolve. But that's not going to stop us from analyzing the spectrum. We just have to keep in mind that a lot of these peaks are going to have slight bumps on one side or the other. So keeping that in mind, if we focus on the major peak for the red, the blue, and the only peak for the green, we can see that they're very well lined up with zero. So having confirmed that, we will now go back. I right click, and I go zoom, clear views, and that takes me to the original spectrum. So just like I magnified this TMS area, I'm going to start on the downfield side of the spectrum on the left, and I'm going to magnify the aldehyde area. Okay, so if we want to know what these colors mean, we right click, view, show overlay key, and we can see here that we have blue, green, and red. The blue is the 5 methyl furfurylamine, which is, of course, not showing up in the aldehyde region. We have the green. 3,4-dimethoxybenzaldehyde, uh, the veritraldehyde, which of course has an aldehyde peak. You can see it's very strong here. And the red is the imine after about 24 hours, so about 88% uh, converted. Now magnifying this a little bit more, we can see that this red peak, which is the leftover aldehyde after about 88% conversion, is not exactly in the same place as the green line, which is the original aldehyde sample. So in fact, if we want to see exactly where these peaks lie, I can put the cursor on the top of the peak and see that it is 9.8490. I get that from the top right-hand corner. I can do the same thing to the red peak, which is 9.832. The question is, is this a real difference, or is this just part of the natural drift of the system? So let's take a look at some other areas to see if we can make that distinction. So again, I'm going to go clear views, and I'm going to look at the next peak, which is this red. The red, again, if we take a look at the overlay key, the red is the mainly the ME, so about 88% conversion. And we don't see anything else in this area, which is what we'd, we would expect. So we're going to go back and expand the aromatic area. So here we can see a lot more complication because we have a number of hydrogens. Now the green is the veritraldehyde, right? The, th the starting material, we have one, two, three protons on that benzene ring. And at the end of the reaction, or after 24 hours, we see that we have one, two, three aromatic protons again, 
uh, that are shifted considerably, which we would expect for the amine formation. But we also see these additional peaks down here in the red and over here in the red. It's actually a little bit ambiguous what's going on here because if we look directly under this green doublet, we see no remaining absorption. If we look directly under other areas where the, the green aldehyde first started, we don't see that there's corresponding peaks that are immediately underneath them. So in order to resolve this, what we're going to have to do is to include more spectra along the course of the reaction. So I'm gonna get back to experiment 45 and then scroll down at the end of the results section to the spectral overlays and I'm gonna go on overlay two that has not only the starting aldehyde and amine but also the reaction after 10%, 34% and again 88% conversion. So now we have a spectrum that has a lot more colors. And by the way, as you're going back and forth between uh, JSpecView applets, uh, Firefox tends to crash pretty often, so you may have to close out the browser and, and start it up again. We're going to try to work on this issue to see if it can be resolved, but um, that always fixes it. So again, what we want to do is to expand the zero area. And again, we can see that even though we have this, this problem with the splitting of the NMR uh, singlets, uh, we in fact have all of the peaks uh, centered at zero for the TMS reference. So we are going to go back, clear the views, and go back and expand the aldehyde region. So to understand what's happening here, let's view the overlay key. Okay, so we have a lot of colors here. Um, the blue and the green are the starting materials. So of course there's no uh, 5 methyl amine in this region, this is the aldehyde area. So we've got the dimethoxybenzaldehyde, the veritraldehyde in green. And then we go red, pink, yellow. So starts off at green, and then red, pink, yellow. So we can see here that we have kind of a migration that's going on over about 0.02 to 0.03 ppm. So this kind of supports the idea that the peaks are migrating instead of having the formation of uh, cis-trans imine isomers, where one of the isomers would just happen to be near the aldehyde peak. So we can continue to put the hypothesis to test. Again, I'm going to clear the views. And I'm going to look at the imine peak, around 8.24. And again here, I can see that this peak, starting in the red, going to the purple, to the yellow, is also shifting over to the right during the course of the experiment. Let's take a look at another area. We're going to look at the aromatic section. And we have a lot of uh, different stuff going on here. I'm going to expand it a little bit more than I did uh, for the overlay one so we can see more clearly what's going on. So again, something that would be helpful here would be to view the overlay key. So it's a little bit harder to track what's going on here. If we pay, co pay close attention, we can see that we go from green to red, purple, yellow, and these peaks, as they're decreasing, are shifting more and more upfield. So by the time we end up with the last spectrum, we've in fact moved enough that the uh, green veritraldehyde is no longer at that position. If we look at the other part of the, the aromatic spectrum, we can see that we don't have that much shifting going on. I hope that I've proved uh, two things here. First, that there's a lot of information that can be extracted from using JSpecView and by overlaying the spectra when monitoring a reaction. 
Uh, the other thing that I really wanted to make clear is that when we are analyzing NMR spectra, we have to be careful to understand the range of the shifts of the peaks over the course of a reaction. So in this particular instance, we've seen movement of 0.02 to 0.03 ppm. And uh, again, making sure that uh, all spectra are properly zeroed, uh, we can see that those shifts are, are real. I invite uh, my fellow chemists out there to give us some feedback, either positive or negative, about what we think is happening in this reaction and in future reactions that we do. Uh, but I feel very strongly that this is really a very promising way to uh, open up the, uh, the, the, the chemical reactions that we're, uh, we're trying to attempt collectively.